GPU instancing is a powerful rendering method. It will help you to drastically improve performance of your games when rendering hundreds of meshes. How does it work? Normally, when you are instantiating some objects, you are doing it one by one and it is being run on the C-sharp side, which is being run on the CPU. So the CPU is telling to the GPU that it should render some object just once. Then the GPU waits for some time until it receives more information about what the next object to render should be. But CPU is a lot slower than GPU. GPU is like hundreds of small CPUs. So what we can do instead is to send a bunch of information from the CPU to the GPU at one time about all of the objects that it should spawn. And when should you use GPU instancing? It can be pretty useful when rendering large crowds of people, particle effects, water simulations, rendering bunch of grass, trees, some big cities and much more. And now let's see how GPU instancing is done on a simple example of many cubes. So we have empty script on an empty object and in the script how do we actually instantiate something using GPU? We can just type graphics that draw mesh instance. To the parameters we just need to supply the mesh, the sub mesh index, which is just if you have multiple meshes into one mesh, you can just choose which one you want to render. Then we need to supply a material and array of all of the matrices. You can think of a matrix just as a transform. It is just holding the scale, rotation and position. And when you are instantiating the meshes, you could do it just in start, but they would disappear because when you want to be able to see them, you need to be rendering it constantly all the time. First, I will define few variables. I will be instantiating the cubes in a grid, so I need to know what should be the size of the grid. Then we have the variable for the mesh, material and array for all of the matrices. So we will need to go through all of the x, y and z positions, just create new matrix and add it to the matrices array. And then we will just draw instances of all of the objects that we want based on the count of the matrices that we have. So remember to do it all in update because we want to be able to see the cubes all the time. First I am just initializing the matrices array. So the size of it is just size multiplied by size multiplied by size. Then I am going through all of the x, y and z positions. I also have a iterator value so that I know to which index in the matrices array I should add the matrix. And then we will just create it. So we will use the function matrix 4x4, that's TRS, which you can see that creates a translation, rotation and scaling matrix. So we will be able to easily input all of the values into it. And it is that simple. So to the position, I'm just inputting x times 2 because I don't want the cubes to be too close to each other. Then we have the same thing, y times 2. To this I'm just adding sign of time so that they are moving up and down. And the rotation is just quaternion.identity and the scale is just vector3.1. You can input any values you want. And then the important part is that after all of these four loops have run through, and we know which objects and where we should instantiate, we are just calling the function to draw mesh instanced just once and all of that will then run on the GPU. Now one quick note, this code is only going to handle 1000 instances because that's the limit of the draw mesh instance function, so we would have to do it in more batches, which is what we'll do later with the grass. So create new material and assign the mesh. And to be able to use the material, you just need to select it and enable the GPU instancing. And now we can see many cubes that are just moving up and down and we are having no issues with the frame rate. You can obviously use any other meshes you would want. Now you are maybe asking me what is the difference in the performance. Well, with GPU instancing, you can see that we are getting around 500 frames per second, which is pretty nice. 
And when I turn it off, which is just using normal instantiating, we are down to about 50 frames per second, which is 10 times less. That's really a huge increase in performance. Another statistic that you can take a look at, which is corresponding to the GPU instancing, are the batches. So right now, with the instancing off, for some reason we are still seeing 13 batches, but saved by batching is about 2000. And when I turn it on, we can see saved by batching around 4000. Another great way to improve the batches is to use just one mesh for one object if you can, and also use just one material for it. And when you select the object, in the inspector you can also mark it as static, but then you will not be able to move with the object because it is just static. So if you have objects that you know there will be hundreds of in the scene and they will need to move, you can use GPU instancing, but if they don't really need to move, you can use just static. Now let's take a look at another great example of using GPU instancing, which is for rendering some grass. So I'm just rendering it around the player, I can also change the range and so on. Right now we are at 80 FPS, which isn't the best, but it works okay. So when I turn off the GPU instancing, we are at 40, which isn't really that big of a difference. But when I say that I want to be able to see it in the range of, let's say, 25, which is pretty much the whole terrain, with GPU instancing, we are at still 65 frames per second, which is okay. But when I turn it off, we are at 4 frames per second, which is really bad. And now you can see that we have around 9000 batches without the instancing. And when I turn it on, we can see that we have still 9000, but we are saving a lot of those batches. So even though we are rendering thousands of grass objects, the game is running still really smooth even in the Unity editor. Here is the code for the grass instancing if you want to take a look at it. And with the previous approach, there was one thing with the batches, so we couldn't instantiate more than 1000 objects at once. So how I fix that is just by creating list of lists of matrices. So essentially the list can have at maximum 1000 matrices. So I just create multiple of these lists. So instead of the matrices array, I have list of lists of matrices 4 by 4 I'm just storing a number of the current batch, which is also the total count of the batches that we have. Then I'm just instantiating new list. I'm adding it to the matrices list. Then again, I'm going through some X and Z positions. I'm just checking for some distance. So if it is close enough to the player, I'm just adding new matrix 4 by 4 to the current list in the matrices list on the batch index. And if count of the matrices in the current batch list is greater than 1000, which means that the list is pretty much full, I'm just adding one to batch and I'm creating new matrix list to the list of the lists of matrices. And then we obviously need to run the function to draw mesh instance as many times as we have the number of batches. So I'm just doing that here. So GPU instancing is really simple to add to your games, it is just one function, but it will really drastically improve your performance when you are instantiating hundreds of these same meshes. One note, you can just instantiate a mesh itself. You can't instantiate game object with another components, which is quite bad thing, but usually when you have hundreds of objects you don't really need to have physics or other components on them, so it works just fine. But the really good thing about this is that you can still manipulate positions of the individual objects. I hope this video was useful, if you have any questions or suggestions, drop them down to the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt Tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.